Thank you very much for participating in the Agency for Cultural Affairs Contemporary Art Workshop today. Prior to the opening of session three, I would like to explain the features of the webinar you are watching. So the webinar will be available in English and Japanese with simultaneous interpretation. Please use the interpretation button at the bottom of the Zoom screen to select the interpretation. You can choose between original audio, Japanese, and English. You can also use the Q&A function during the distribution. If you have any questions in text, please send them via the Q&A function. If you are watching online and would like to speak in audio, please write, I would like to speak in the Q&A section and post your name and what you would like to speak and please wait until uh, the moderator allows you to speak. Please note that the raise your hand function and chat function are not available. Also, a request to all participants. An archived video of today's program will be available on the Art Platform Japan website in early February. Please refrain from recording or capturing the video. Now, I would like to begin section, th section three, the possibilities in exhibition making methods in the pandemic era. Moderated by Ms. Kamiya Yukie, art critic and curator of Contemporary Art Committee Japan, the steering committee of Bunkacho Art Platform Japan. She will be speaking from New York today. Ms. Kamiya, over to you. Thank you for your introduction. My name is uh, the Kamiya Yukie, and I will be moderating session three of the Agency of and the Cultural Affairs and the Contemporary Art Workshop. This workshop is one of the Agency for Cultural Affairs Art Platform projects launching in 2018 and aims to build international and interpersonal networks through art. The session titled Possibilities in Exhibition Making Methods in Post-Pandemic Area will feature for specialists from Japan and the US who are practicing exhibitions and the programs that focus on time-based media, expressive media such as film, video, and performance. Each of them will present a case study of an exhibition they have worked on, followed by a discussion. Before we get started, I would like to thank the Secretariat of the Agency for Cultural Art Affairs Art Platform the Agency for Cultural Affairs for hosting this event and everyone who has supported us in making this event possible. I would also like to express my deepest gratitude to all the speakers who agreed to speak from Japan early in the morning and from the United States on Friday night. The Sudanar. So the, and we have the forecast for a blizzard and here in New York and we are seeing the blizzard. So the over the night, uh, uh, so the the Corona crisis has changed our daily lives by greatly disrupting the movement of people and goods, but it has also forced major changes and modification in the creation of the exhibition, which has led to a shift in thinking and highlighted a variety of issues. Shortage of materials and no schedule available for borrowing and transporting are arts works. The list of negative aspects is endless, but at the same time, it was an opportunity to think about sustainable exhibition and the ecosystem of international exhibitions. In this session, we will discuss the possibilities of practical exhibition making in the post-pandemic era by connecting Philadelphia, New York, Tokyo, and Fukuoka, focusing on exhibitions that deal with the time-based media. The speakers are as follows. The speakers are so the An Adachi Director Collaborative Catalography in Japan, Hiroko Tasaka, Curator, Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography, Erika and a paper mix Shimizu, Associate Curator, Department of Media and Performance, the Museum of Art and Modern Art, New York, and Azusa Hashimoto, and a curator, the National Museum of Art, Osaka. 
Here is the timetable for this session. First, each of the four speakers will give a 15 to 20 minute presentation. Then we will have a discussion on the presentations at 11 a.m. Japan time and 9 p.m. U.S. East Coast time. If you have any questions about the presentations, please submit them in the Q&A section. If you have any questions about the presentations, please send them to us in the Q&A section. And we try to answer them during the second half of the discussion. If you are here in, there in the venue, please raise a hand and join discussion directly. Now let's move on to the presentation of our first presentation, Ms. Ang Adachi. So that she's a really experimental Philadelphia and based on Philadelphia and a collaborative. Uh, so she's the executive uh, the director and of uh, the collaborative cartography in Japan and uh, and and used to be and in charge of and the CMAP. And before that, electric art and intermix EAI. And so the experimental so the, uh, the plant uh, on a micro and uh, in 2019. So the, and she is actively on work. Uh, and, uh, Thank you very much for your introduction. And uh, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I am uh, the uh, Adachi An, and I am uh, the heading the CCJ, the Collaborative Catholic in Japan, based in Philadelphia. And thanks to the introduction uh, by Ms. Kamiya, and I have been able to participate in this uh, art workshop by Agency for Cultural Affairs. It is my great honor to join you. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to Ms. Doi and uh, her team in the Bunga Cho. So the main theme of this presentation is possibilities of in exhibition and making methods in the pandemic era. Based on my experience in 2020 and 2021, and uh, the significance uh, to us at CCJ, and the background uh, of that uh, is uh, we are going to uh, provide digital content and provide uh, the support for uh, preservation of uh, content. And access and uh, preservation are mutually related. So about this uh, concept, I would like to uh, describe uh, the first part uh, of my presentation first. Uh, so uh, could you turn to the next uh, uh, slide? And the main uh, case study was done in 2020. And uh, you do not have the text here. Excuse me. No, this PowerPoint, I should show some text here. But in any ways, and uh, so the case study was done in 2020 and, and at Pioneer Works in Brooklyn, United States. And uh, we had the exhibition of modern cinema, Jonouji Motoharu and Keiji Tanaami. And uh, so anybody in the secretariat, would you like to check uh, so whether the PDF version will work? Yeah, so, so that the text will be shown. So this one doesn't show the text. So the photos I have just shown here, and more than cinema, uh, Jono Uchi uh, Motoharu and Keiichi Tanaami uh, were shown uh, at Pioneer Works in uh, the 2020. And then the preceding project was a Japanese expanded cinema that was a research and it didn't culminate in exhibition, but rather uh, we spent time for the methods of uh, uh, preservation and also interview with the artists, the curators, and archivists about the methods of exhibition. And the core members of CCJ and Hirasawa Go and Julian Ross and Hiroko Tasaka, and those three were already uh, planning to, to have the expanded cinema uh, project uh, for 2018 with Tokyo Photographic Art Museum. So, so the grant uh, that we have received from CCJ uh, was uh, spent for further delving uh, the works uh, that the core members did uh, earlier. And the photos show uh, the, our survey uh, uh, acti activities in New York in 2017. And uh, at MoMA, so we talked with uh, Peter Oleksik uh, and Stuart Kummer, who are conservators. 
And so we also talked about uh, the exhibition and conservation method of uh, time-based uh, media. At uh, New York University, we did a presentation and had a discussion uh, with uh, the faculties and students. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in this way, we had uh, the uh, interview the, of uh, curators and archivists, and in Japan also, uh, Hirasawa and Tasaka, and Julian also uh, did uh, some interviews. And those interviews were stored as videos and transcriptions, and uh, so available in public through the website of CCJ. And preservation and digitization have started about that time. And so we have been able to build a network of human resources. And so in 2021, and so we could not uh, come to uh, Japan due to the pandemic. Still, we were able to uh, have uh, collaborative works uh, with uh, archivists uh, in Japan and the US. And CCJ's uh, project, uh, the uh, professional exchange, also helped us uh, build our foundation for collaborations. And the shadows uh, research by uh, Miyai uh, was done in Japan, and the Hirasawa was the principal investigator. And if uh, archiving, Imagica uh, helped us, and film artist Suzuki uh, Yasuhiro uh, helped us, and uh, John uh, Kluxman, a film archive archivist, helped us as an advisor. And all those individuals uh, helped us uh, to restore uh, the uh, film content uh, in the best possible way. And the archived uh, the, uh, elements uh, were donated to the Tokyo Photographic Art Museum. CCJ is an archive uh, organization. So therefore, uh, the product that we made uh, had to be asked uh, to be uh, preserved. And the Tanami Keiichi is a fabric of uh, human relationships. Uh, it was based on uh, the 2018 work collection. It was also uh, the uh, preserved. And uh, the negative uh, print, negatives and prints uh, uh, were donated to uh, MoMA uh, to be preserved. And so not only conservation, but uh, CCJ also uh, doing uh, digitization uh, as a way to support research and surveys. I would like to just uh, uh, delve uh, in uh, the John Uchi's work. And in this expanded uh, cinema, and uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, publicized uh, the Japanese expanded cinema and intermedia critical text uh, of the 1960s. And that was translated uh, into foreign language and, uh, to be uh, archived in uh, Berlin's archive books. Um, the, uh, and we also planned exhibitions uh, in order to uh, present our archiving work and digitizing work. That is the more than, than cinema exhibition. The next slide, please. And before talking about the exhibition, and I would like to uh, talk about uh, a project by uh, Azuchi Shuzo Galiva, so who is engaged in uh, our mission of access. More than cinema uh, was uh, concurrently held uh, uh, with uh, Galiva's cinematic illumination in 1968 at um, MoMA. And it was a large scale slide projection using 18 units. And Mr. Galiva, uh, uh, worked with us, and uh, we got to know him through uh, the artist talk in 2017. And uh, Tasaka-san uh, uh, did an uh, exhibition at um, uh, Cinematic Illumination. So from the viewpoint of uh, preservation, and we thought that it would be uh, reassuring to have one more copy of, uh, uh, so that we may be able to uh, increase uh, uh, the people who can access it. Uh, so therefore, we approached the MoMA uh, for preservation and exhibition and collection. As a result, uh, they helped us, and uh, we plan to have a, a solo exhibition in 2020. And Mr. Galeva uh, was featured as the performance event artist of modern cinema, and he also uh, worked for uh, the project uh, in Haverford uh, Universities in Philadelphia and in 2020 uh, spring. And he was supposed to have uh, the solo exhibition in the gal gallery of Haverford University. However, due to the pandemic, and that uh, exhibition was canceled. 
And the project with the students uh, was done through uh, online remote discussions. And next uh, slide, please. Now, I would like to uh, 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 talk about uh, the uh, support mission and CCJ in 2015 and experimental film and uh, experimental uh, video art and animation. So based on those activities, we have uh, collected, uh, uh, started to collect uh, the works uh, that was done in 1950 on to 1980. CCJ's mission uh, is supported by three pillars. Um, uh, the one is the preservation. This is the main work of CCJ. So without uh, preservation, um, people may not access uh, the, uh, the content. So therefore, the very foundation uh, is uh, the conservation. And the preserved artworks uh, can be seen at uh, screening uh, sessions and exhibitions, and so that people will understand uh, uh, the, re uh, the legacies and the history of Japanese experimental uh, filming. And on by using online the, the database, uh, so it is uh, still a prototype. We made it, and so from here, so Japanese uh, the experimental uh, films and so those can be uh, the uh, uh, preserved and this is going to be a good resource and when we uh, increase the number of uh, projects and accesses and uh, we are hoping to uh, further support uh, the film and uh, the video uh, preservation activities uh, this is all, all still in working uh, progress and let's get back to the slide And next uh, slide, please. So due to the pandemic, and we have increased the digital content. And as a result, the CCJ has received uh, the larger uh, number of audience. And through our streaming site, international audience have started to access uh, these uh, contents. And more number of uh, curators and researchers get to know our uh, preserved uh, products. So we're hoping to uh, lead uh, those uh, products uh, to be seen and preserved. So more than cinema exhibition was opened on Friday, March 6, uh, 2020. So that was the plan. However, uh, there was a lockdown uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, the lockdown was announced. Uh, so on uh, March 9th, so therefore, so after a few days, uh, so this uh, ex exhibition had to be closed. Uh, all the performance event, the book launch, symposium were canceled. Kanai Katsu and Gulliver could not go to uh, the United States, and we have not been able to uh, to, to stage the performance uh, of uh, expanded uh, cinema. And, but uh, book launch, uh, uh, was canceled in the spring. However, uh, the following year, 2021, MoMA hosted uh, uh, Gulliver's Cinematic Illumination, and the curator, Sophie Kavalox, uh, the planned online event uh, so that uh, so many uh, friends of CCJ participated, and these are the, the ones who participated in the event. Next slide, please. So this exhibition uh, can be seen by this photo, expanded cinema, so the film-based theme uh, uh, project. But this is not just about the film projection, but then this was also a digital video uh, and installation using film materials. And so we had uh, one for Jono Uchi and uh, uh, Tana Ami. But Jono Uchi's work was uh, the longer and then it was not suitable for a long-term uh, exhibition. So therefore, it had to be converted to the digital version. And one-time characteristics, film performance, and the works uh, uh, that were uh, publicized as an uh, event. And so those were not suitable for gallery uh, exhibitions. So that was uh, uh, made public uh, via the digital uh, form. So, it was like an archivistic uh, the exhibition. Exhibition uh, uh, expanded cinema's uh, performance ability uh, was uh, uh, supposed to be uh, complemented by the performance event by Kanai and Galeva. 
And emphasis on the archivability is not just about uh, the method of uh, the, uh, the works uh, exhibition, uh, but the entire process was had to be engaged. And Jono Uchi's uh, films, uh, uh, Positive, uh, was found by Hirasawa. And the shelter plan by Jono Uchi and document 6.19 are versions which are already uh, made public. However, in 1960s, and those were uh, made public as a film performance. So the cut positive uh, so, uh, might have been used for a performance those days. So that was Hirasawa's view. So therefore, uh, there is a small monitor, and then so uh, the uh, uh, unpublicized, uh, digitized uh, the version was also uh, exhibited. On the left-hand side, uh, document 6.15, and, and uh, three footages uh, and small monitors are was shown. And, and so this, uh, the, uh, the, the work was shown uh, in an event, uh, like a happening event. And there was uh, the possibility that uh, this work uh, might have been used in the, uh, the past. And Jono Uchi uh, 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 made a documentary about Imperial Hotel Highlight Center's event shelter plan uh, was done at Imperial Hot Hotel. And so therefore, this uh, cut a uh, uh, positive uh, was also exhibited. And on the other side, and shelter plans film projection uh, was planned, but as a result, and uh, so we had to use the digitized version uh, for the view. Next slide, please. And uh, the wall of the archived uh, materials uh, were used for uh, Tana Army floors and also Jono Uchi's floor, both. And uh, the floor for uh, Jono Uchi and we used the 1960s uh, intermedia uh, pamphlets and discussions and uh, also uh, the documented uh, photos of events and also sketchbooks and books uh, for Jono Uchi. Tana Ami's floor featured pet sketches, performance documents, um, and also disco killer Joe's uh, Tana Ami designed and also the translated version of a manifesto uh, by uh, Tone Yasu uh, Aki. And uh, the uh, fabric of the human relations uh, by Tana Ami and Julian Ross interview uh, with Tana Ami were also uh, shown here. Professional exchange and collection survey, and uh, which was uh, uh, mentioned earlier. And so the uh, fabric of human relations was uh, uh, preserved. So based on the study done in 2018, we uh, invited uh, the experts, two experts are from uh, New York, and uh, Julian, an archivist, uh, John Kluxman, uh, took the lead in the event. And the photo shows uh, that John and uh, Julian and Tanami doing the cataloging of the film in the studio. And after this uh, project, John uh, uh, provided our report uh, with a list of uh, 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 the, uh, the artworks uh, that needs to be archived as early as possible. Uh, this report uh, leads to the 2021 uh, the preservation uh, project uh, of uh, the uh, experimental animation. And so we did a survey in 2018. So we already knew what works had to be preserved. So even during the pandemic, and working together with the arch uh, archivists uh, that we have met in 2018, we have been able to work together with them even during the pandemic. And I talked about the importance of networking um, in 2018. So. So other than the uh, project uh, of research, we also had the professional exchange program. And those uh, photos uh, show the uh, professional exchange. And Tokyo, uh, the Photographic Art Museum uh, was visited. And we also uh, uh, visited uh, the film archive uh, facilities in New York and uh, had uh, some uh, conversation with uh, curators and archivists. Next. And uh, coming back to the uh, the talk of exhibitions, Pioneer Works in uh, was uh, closed uh, from uh, March 9th, 2020, and so until the fall, it was closed. And 
So in September, we reopened, and it was opened uh, in on November 22nd. So during the breakdown or the uh, close down, and we uh, uh, developed a link uh, to uh, the digitized content on our web. So this page uh, is uh, accessible even today. And OK, let's get back to the slide. And so, so our 2020 ended like this in 2021. So we started two new projects, Asian Cultural Council and Polar Foundation and Toshiba International Foundation provided us with support. And we started a media art group study interrogating ecology, 1970s media and art in Japan. And we also studied the experimental animation preservation and uh, screening as well. And so we digitized those contents and preserved those contents. And even during the pandemic, we have been able to uh, make use of uh, the uh, experts uh, network that we have built earlier. So we have been able to uh, push forward the project with archivists and collaborators in Korea, Japan, the United States, and Europe and interrogating ecologies and the collection uh, survey uh, was done. Uh, so based on the communication with uh, uh, title holders and uh, artists uh, uh, themselves, and also, so we used the process of uh, checking uh, by Japanese uh, curators, archivists, and the experimental animation project uh, was uh, 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 expedited uh, based on the report uh, by uh, Tana Ami uh, in 2018. And Sogetsu Art Center film uh, was uh, studied and preserved. And so we have digitized and uh, preserved content. Interrogating ecology uh, 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 was culminated uh, with the workshop and the uh, study presentations, uh, Imai Norio's interview, and online uh, screening programs. And the project of uh, the experimental animation. And so February uh, this year, we have a plan uh, to, uh, to do a screening uh, uh, that we have preserved in Philadelphia. And uh, Sea Battle by Yanagihara uh, Ryohei uh, uh, was uh, digitally restored. And that is going to be shown. And also, Kuryoji's uh, studio's collaboration. Uh, we are going to uh, show his animation and interview. And Shinohara Ushio is based in New York. Um, so so we worked together with uh, Tomi Reiko. And uh, they came to, uh, they are going to come to Philadelphia so that they can have a talk session after the screening. Uh, so under this pandemic, even if we cannot come to Japan, we have been able to uh, go ahead with our project and produce results. And so other than this, and uh, we have developed a streaming site. Uh, we have been able to now show the films through the, the site. So in order to cover the cost of uh, building the streaming site, we have uh, provided a content uh, for members only. So we have the uh, uh, added uh, new uh, uh, contents uh, for members only uh, every month. So. So wherever uh, people are and whenever uh, people are, uh, they can just access uh, the contents uh, through an online chat uh, called the spatial chat. Uh, we have already tested that. And we also had the reception time uh, so that uh, the individual networking uh, become uh, possible through the platform. And we also use a Zoom uh, so that we can have events and interviews uh, with uh, Japanese artists. Uh, so in the past, uh, we had to pay a huge cost of traveling. And so there are many international audience uh, have participated in CCJ's program. So we would like to continue this momentum uh, so that we are going to develop our preservation activities. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, and Ansam. So the, and from your presentation, so the preservation, and the research, and access, and the uh, the necessity of those, and was really stressed. And uh, so that, that uh, the, 
So that this is an, a critical and to an a research and uh, uh, the exhibition. So that this is. So that thank you very much for your and uh, uh, insightful. And a point and uh, uh, so the work sharing of the mutual support and in collaboration with the museum. So that was shared. And in the next, so the other uh, in uh, the answers and the presentation are uh, mentioned. Uh, the next presenter is uh, Tasaka Hiroko and uh, Hiroko and uh, so the curator and the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography. And so, and she is an Ebisu, and so that he's the Ebisu Film Festival. She's working on that, and so she's joining us and online from Tokyo. And so, the and the 2012 and the, uh, the adventure of uh, and the images and the possible and the to record, and uh, and, uh, and the bright room, and uh, the, uh, the demon and the ex expanded cinema and the visited we visited. And, and she's been working on Ebisu Film and the festival and since and 2019. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Tatsaka Hiroko, curator at the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography. The Possibilities in exhibition making methods in the pandemic era is the topic for this session. And I will talk about the exhibition and the preservation of video and the media artworks using actual exhibitions as examples with the reproduction and the creation of the key term. I start my presentation today in terms of reproduction and creation. I would like to talk about uh, the two exhibitions that I have been involved in since the 2000s. There has been a growing interest in the preservation and the restoration of artworks using time-based media, especially in Western museums. And in the last 10 to 15 years, there has been an increase in the number of cases of preservation and the restoration of video and media artworks in Japan. Our museum has also been surveying actual cases in Japan and abroad, and been involved in the preservation of the restoration of photographs, video works, and material that were become difficult to reproduce due to age-related deterioration, as well as digitization and cut following through research. The exhibition is the result of examining the practical method of archiving these words, and at the same time, it reconstructs the history of video and media art and is always associated with bringing up today's issue. In this presentation, I will focus on the case study of the exhibition, Japanese Expanded Cinema Revisited, held at our museum in 2017, and also they introduced the exhibition, Ekisinimo, and that link held under the current pandemic in 2020 as a reference case study. I hope to reproduce artworks using time-based media and think about them from the perspective of reproduction and creation. The expanded cinema revisited and focused on the development in Japan of the expanded cinema movement that has been spread in Europe and the United States since the mid-1960s. Ekisinimo exhibition was also exhibition by the Japanese media artist duo Ekisinimo, which was held in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. The exhibition expanded cinema revisited examined the uniqueness of the events that unfolded in Japan by representing and situating them within the Western-centered history of film. In fact, the work of Shuzo Azuchi Gulliver, one of the artists in this exhibition, is in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, to which and Ms. Erika, and one of the presenters belongs and is being exhibited during the pandemic. I hope to hear about that on this occasion. 
The fact that the Exinimo exhibition was held in the pandemic has emphasized the fact that it makes full use of both real and online exhibition methods, but also intends to examine the issues of reproductivity and archiving of exhibitions of media such as the internet in the context of media history through the works of the Japanese artist duo Exinimo, who have been active since the 1990s with their starting point in internet art and have moved to New York. Therefore, the common point between those two exhibitions is that the exhibition in the museum space is not the ultimate goal, but is connected to the question of how to reproduce such media with different outputs. The two have in common the idea of thinking about what it means to reproduce them there. With the pandemic of COVID-19, our daily lives are becoming more and more online, and the way we access artworks using type-based media is changing. The question of how to reproduce and restage performances, visual media and media artworks, and how to realize such experiences in exhibitions will become an even more important issue in the future. The exhibition Japanese Expanded Cinema Revisited was held for two months starting in August 2017. Please see the video documentation. like to talk about how this exhibition came how this exhibition came to be the work you were looking at right now is reproduction of a 1964 work called that movie by Imura Takahiko in the process of figuring out how to realize such a movement as expanded cinema which is similar to a transient performance in an exhibition we worked with film scholars Hirasawa Go and Julian Worth, referring to their precedents and to realize the exhibition. These two scholars have been actively organizing screenings of Japanese expanded cinema at the Harvard Film Archive, the Museum of Art, Modern Art in New York, the Telt Modern, the International Film Festival, Rotterdam, and Art Institute of Chicago since 2011. It can be said that the activities of the two 
have been linked to the high level of interest in the Japanese 1960s, including its films and videos, which is recognized in the West over the past few years. I think this is a sign that research on the Japanese 60s is becoming more concrete and objective and is being discussed from a more international perspective. The second important point that I tried to make in the exhibition was that it tried to restage the film media in order to examine the role of film exhibitions in museum today. Over the past few years, while the number of laboratories that develop film in the field of photography and video has been dwindling, the need for digitalization and preservation and restoration has been increasing as film deteriorates over time. Also, museums in Europe and the US have begun to focus on the preservation and the restoration of time-based media. The term time-based media is used to describe an artistic journey that involves a time axis in the form of expression. And in this exhibition, we also addressed the issue of how to reproduce transient performance and a video that involves time as an exhibition. In particular, the existing works of Shuzo Azuchi Gulliver, Imura Takahiko, and Oe Masanori were reproduced and with the advice of each artist with the aim of presenting them using 16 millimeter film and the slide projectors, the technology of the time. Often when museums collect and exhibit artworks, they tend to forget the importance of the experience of the works themselves, but experiencing a transitory event anew in the present can have a different meaning and expansion, and at the same time, it can create an opportunity to reproduce the, and the rethink the experience of viewing artworks in museum. In this sense, exhibiting past works exactly in the same way as they were presented at the time is not possible, but I believe that there is a creative element of new creation that is born from the experience of exhibiting. This is what I have come to realize in organizing these exhibitions. Imura's work was uh, presented at the time as a film installation showing the death of cinema when the, when the blackness was projected on a loop time projector, nothing was shown. When light is shown on the projector itself in this state, only the shadow of the projector is projected on the screen. This is a work that symbolically deals with the depth of the film image in order to free oneself from the idea of film. The shadow of the projector is visible without showing the film content of the image. This work is an example of how Imura himself has been thinking about how to perceive such images and entities since 1964. And this work was presented at the very early stage in 1964. Although it was not positioned as an expanded cinema at that time, it was already being expressed in a way that led to this kind of expression in the Japanese art movement at the time. And this was an expression that was created without the intention of being shown in an exhibition. And we reproduced to the work with this in mind. Next, let me move on to conceptual artist Shuzo Azuchi Gulliver, who is uh, of a younger generation than Imura Takahiko. Shuzo's work, Cinematic Elimination, was sh shown at the Internet Art Festival held at the Ginza Tokyo Discotheque Killer Joe's and at the Nikkei Hall. Gulliver himself participated and in those events and in the performance at the two venues. 
Cinematic Elimination was one of the works presented as a temporary performance at Killer Joe's discotheque in Ginza. In this exhibition, and we reproduced this work and while examining what that performance was about, this is a 360-degree projection of the 18 units of projected installed at Killer Joe's. By using slides of 16 millimeter film taken at the time, the work creates an experience of the time axis of images that couldn't be seen with a normal projection. And this is a partial cross section of Killer Joe's. The artwork was presented in the space of a discotheque in the basement. And uh, there are few records of this time. However, the artist himself actually kept a clear record of these slides and the format in which they were shown at the time, which made it possible to recreate the order in which the slides were shown using 18 slide projectors. The exhibition was held in 2017, but it was actually realized while talking to the artist and discussing with him on how to restage the work which we had done before 2015. And as you can see, Keller Joe's is a very different space from our museum, Gulliver, the creator of this work wanted to restage it in as large a space as possible. So we, we designed a space in the basement of the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography that could be used as much as possible and worked with the technical team to make it happen. What was very challenging was to find the right lenses to make the images look bigger and uh, how to reproduce the order of the images using relay switches. That was a really challenging part. Although the timing of the slide project so they may have been and reproduced at a faster speed than it was at the time. We thoroughly discussed with the artist what kind of experience would be possible in order to realize the restaging of the work. Lastly, I would like to briefly introduce the exhibition and that link held in 2020 by Exonimo. Exonimo is a duo of Japanese artists who started the activities in Japan in 1996. Just before the exhibition was realized, just before the exhibition was realized, there came the outbreak of COVID-19, which made it difficult for them to visit Japan. I can only talk about the Exonimo exhibition for a short time. 
with the declaration of the state emergency issued, we had to figure out how to realize a solo exhibition of these two artists who are currently in New York. Originally, there was a plan to have a solo exhibition including their new works, but due to the fact that they couldn't come to Japan, we thought it would be a good idea to have an archival exhibition showing the works of Exenimo, who started their career with the internet artworks in chronological order. Starting from the internet artworks, we struggled to find a way to reproduce their internet artworks. At the same time, we created an internet venue where visitors can could experience the work in real life and also a website where they could experience the chronology of their work. <coughs> this is still available on the website of our museum, so please take a look. I have been running through the two exhibitions, including Exenimo. While it is uh, no longer possible to experience internet artworks as they were in the browsers of that time, we have tried and uh, to reproduce them and make them accessible as an exhibition. And, uh, and in the course, and I think uh, the, the reproduction of media with performance elements as an exhibition as well as the creativity that emerges in the midst of the difficulty of 100% reproduction will be important issues to consider in the future. This may seem to be a bit rushed, but I would like to conclude my presentation here. Thank you very much for watching today. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Tasaka, and the original works of art. And uh, so we cannot uh, reproduce them 100%. So therefore, it's a, a very uh, special uh, one time. So that uh, it requires uh, the ability of creativity. And we would like to further talk with her after the discussion. And next, I would like to introduce to you uh, Ms. Erika Pepenik Shimizu. And uh, she is the uh, associate curator of the Department of Media and Performance at MoMA. And from 2005, and she has worked for MoMA PS1, and now you, she is working for the Department of Media Performance. And she is uh, one of the, uh, uh, the mastermind uh, for the establishment of that department. Uh, she has been uh, involved in many uh, projects. From the perspective of curation, uh, she has uh, been uh, specializing in exhibitions. And she is uh, was, uh, the, uh, the, the, res the responsible for the touring event of Carolee Schumann's uh, Kinetic Painting, curated by Sabine uh, Brightweiser. And she's going to uh, present uh, to us about her recent program at MoMA, Shigeko Kubota Liquid Reality. And uh, Erika, uh, you have the screen. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Erica Papernick Shimizu, and I'm pleased to present on organizing the exhibition Shigeko Kubota Liquid Reality at MoMA, which has been on view since August 2021 and closes in a couple of weeks. Planning for this exhibition intensified in spring 2020 in the midst of New York City's COVID-19 lockdown. I began the process by poring over the copious materials in the artist's archive, made accessible through a proprietary online database established by the Shigeko Kubota Video Art Foundation. Thanks to the leadership of Norman Ballard and scrupulous work performed by the foundation team, Jochen Sauerrocker, Leah Robinson, and Reed Ballard, I had full access to the archive even during the lockdown. As I examined rarely seen drawings, writings, and ephemera, I gained a richer understanding of Kubota's crucial early video sculptures, many of which had not been exhibited in nearly 30 years. This led me to refine the MoMA exhibition to a focused selection of the artist's defining works from this pivotal chapter. 
I considered that the existing perspectives on Kubota were largely biographical, and I wanted to put her back on the map as an artist in her own right. For me, that meant creating the ideal conditions for the works to speak for themselves. In working closely with our fantastic exhibition designer, Hiroko Ishikawa, I shaped the exhibition as an in-depth consideration of Kubota's achievements that were so groundbreaking in their own time, yet remain equally, if not more relevant, in today's highly digital landscape. This exhibition was the result of close collaboration with the Foundation and with several museum departments, including MoMA Media and Sculpture Conservation. The exhibition takes place across two adjacent spaces, each of which was intentional and significant. Since this was the first monographic exhibition of the artist's work at a U.S. museum in decades, I aimed to highlight her importance as both a pioneering media artist and as a sculptor. The earlier works in the exhibition are placed in a space that is part of the museum's fourth floor collection galleries, seen here. This is important because it situates Kubota within a broader American sculptural context and canon. As scholar Gloria Sutton wrote in her essay for the exhibition's catalog, quote, the hybridity of Kubota's video sculptures was at odds with the prevailing monocultural, male-dominated art historical narratives of the period. Artworks could be specifically video or sculpture, but not both, end quote. These works combined the energy of electrons with inert material, the fundamentally oppositional medium of video art with the sanctified realm of the object, by obscuring the monitor and therefore its brand name, Kubota isolated video from the realm of mass communication and consumer culture. And in doing so, she made video part of the object and created an entirely new plane for viewing moving images. Kubota is often described as a feminist artist because of her early fluxus action vagina painting seen here. But I would argue that the hybrid interventions put forward by her video sculptures are also feminist propositions. To position these works in the museum's fourth floor collection galleries emphasizes their gravity as well as their radicality. At a time when artists were just beginning to fully grasp the implications of video technology, which was built to transmit information and until the 1970s had been limited largely to corporate-run TV networks, Kubota transformed the television set, symbol of mass communication, into a tool for personal reflection. The earliest work in the exhibition is Kubota's self-portrait, which contains some of her earliest experimentation with video. A rare example of her using the camera as a mirror, I view this work as the bridge between her performative actions and her groundbreaking video practice. It captures the utopian ethos of the transformative moment when artists were first discovering the boundless potential of video technology. The prominent placement of this work also foregrounds the way in which each sculpture on view can be interpreted as an implicit form of portraiture. From her use of diaristic video, to text, to mirror fragments, and the reflective surfaces of mirrors and water. By taking Kubota's notion of liquid reality as the exhibition's starting point, I wanted to touch on the creative freedom that she felt video allowed, as well as the freedom from precedent that video represented, which not only drew Kubota to the medium, but compelled her to present video as sculpture. Liquid reality also pertains to Kubota's commentary on the mass media, with River, for example, she turned monitors upside down and made their screens visible only through the unstable surface of water, creating mirror reflections of media reflections. The artist's assertion, I like video because it is heavy, is invoked through this early image of her with the porta pack strapped to her back, which I included in the exhibition's title wall. Thinking about the nearly invisible recording mechanisms of today in contrast with Kubota's writings about the physical traces left on her body by bulky early portable video equipment, I wanted to make the point that Kubota's volumetric sculptures partly resulted from how corporeal the video making process was for her. I wanted to get viewers thinking about how she got from her Duchampiana objects, which employed Duchamp's work and legacy as a framework for exploring the newfound capabilities and implications of video, and which posited video as something heavy, something permanent, to her works that rotate, suspend, and reflect video monitors in space. These works both make use of the architectural environment to further push the boundaries between video and sculpture, and to respond to shifting environmental conditions. This brings us to the adjacent exhibition space, MoMA's Kravis Studio, seen here. 
In this gallery, I've grouped together a selection of works against the backdrop of Midtown Manhattan, emphasizing both Kubota's environmental sensibility and her importance as a New York artist. The works presented here, River, Video Haiku, and Niagara Falls One, are characterized by a sense of weightlessness that combine post-war fabrication techniques with the unpredictability of nature, moving water and mirror fragments that freely float. And they disrupt the horizontal structure of television viewing by bisecting the 25-foot high space. This gesture is achieved with an economy of means that makes these works equal parts radical and poetic. Thinking about the ways in which early video art was a countercultural art form at odds with corporate TV broadcast, I love that you can actually see the NBC Comcast Studios Tower at Rockefeller Center just beyond Kubota's Niagara Falls sculpture, which skews and inverts 10 television monitors in cascading descent above a reflecting pool and ruminates on the increasingly fluid relationship between nature and technology. Seeing these works in person, I've been struck by the signs of use you can see in many of the sculpture's surfaces. Kubota lived among her plywood sculptures in her Mercer Street loft, and as a result, they show signs of use that we consider to be an important part of the life of these works. This history of use is evidence of a DIY ethos informed by Flexus, but also supports the fact that Kubota approached her works both as sculptures and as conceptual propositions. During the pandemic, the museum launched its Hyundai Card Video Views series, a series of online screenings of collection works with related interviews. Self-Portrait was on view on MoMA's website here for a limited two-week engagement, alongside a written conversation between myself, Gloria Sutton, and Leah Robinson. This program has been a fantastic way to facilitate access to the museum's video collection during the pandemic without a paywall. To complement the exhibition, the accompanying publication consists of a visual essay for each work in the exhibition, comprised of unconventional installation views, a range of primary materials, studies, references, ephemera, as well as ample video stills. It was also important to me to show Kubota at work. Here are two images showing her utilizing electronic video processing to create her videos. This spread shows her at Anthology Film Archives, alongside an image of the stationery indicating her title as video curator there. Together, these materials tell a rich, multidimensional story through the archive. Finally, I reproduced a selection of watercolor haiku from Kubota's notebooks, as well as the essay she originally published in the Open Circuits catalog in 1974. By reprinting this frequently cited text, I wanted to emphasize Kubota's role in advocating for the new video medium and for fellow women in video, but also to invoke the physicality of early video making that she describes here in connection with her video sculptures specifically. For me, what makes these works so impactful and which I wanted to communicate through this focused survey is the way in which Kubota found a way to present video in such a way that demanded an awareness of one's own body in space. I'd like to close with this remarkable quote from Gloria Sutton's essay in the exhibition catalog, quote, by embedding time-based media within freestanding architectonic forms, Kubota invited concentrated acts of looking and listening. She determined that moving images could become monuments and the inverse, inert objects could become animated sites of mediation, end quote. Thank you, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you and Erica for your and uh, presentation on Amer so the, in the context of uh, an American sculpture and Kubota uh, Shigeko and uh, should it be added uh, if with that uh, the intention and the exhibition was realized uh, on the space of MoMA and on the first uh, the floor and uh, the cinema illusion by and uh, and the Shuzo Ezujin uh, the Galiber was and uh, also held and uh, and in the uh, the context of uh, the context of uh, the art and uh, history and uh, to be and uh, realized and uh, the diversity and uh, of ethnicity and uh, the gender and uh, this is uh, incorporated and uh, and incorporated and uh, in the exhibition of an American and uh, museums and we say that and the last presentation and it is. Uh, 
the and Hashimoto Azusa Senior Researcher, the National Museum of Art Osaka. And in and since and in 2008, and she's been working in that and uh, museum, and so the uh, the focusing on the and uh, famous, and uh, the. So the another and uh, conceptualism and uh, from an uh, Asia and and uh, someone on else's at uh, a time and uh, since 1967 and uh, today. So the Anika uh, the prefecture uh, and uh, uh, the and uh, this is and uh, and uh, focused on Viva Video Kubota Shigeto exhibition. And uh, uh, so the uh, she is uh, uh, introducing uh, the Kubota Shigeko and uh, in Japan. And uh, over to you. Hello, everyone. I'm Azusa Hashimoto from the National Museum of Art Osaka. So the, thank you for inviting me. The presentation will introduce the Viva Video Shigeko Kubota exhibition, which began at the Niigata Prefecture Museum of Modern Art in March 2021, traveled to the National Museum of Art Osaka in the summer, and it's currently being held at the Museum of Contemporary at Tokyo. I will talk about the impact of the pandemic on the management of the exhibition, various issues related to the exhibition, time-based media works, and the aims of the exhibition. So the, let me uh, state that. And so the, uh, the uh, different from the, uh, the three presenters, and uh, I'm not uh, uh, sort of working on the new media art and the contemporary art. So the, and including on all kinds of medium. So that I'm working on that and from under that position. So that I would like to, uh, uh, so that I am uh, involved in the planning of the Kubota Shigeko exhibition. A large scale and a solar exhibition by the Niigata born New York based video artist Shigeko Kubota has been a long time project at the Niigata Prefecture Museum of Modern Art. And in 2018, research and the preparation for the exhibition officially began as a joint project between the Niigata Prefecture Museum of Modern Art and the Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo and the National Museum of Art Osaka. And the Kubota passed away in 2015. This is the first solo exhibition of Kubota work in Japan in 30 years since 1992. The exhibition in 1992 held at the Hara Museum of Contemporary Art was a variation of the artist's modern, most extensive mid-career retro retrospective and which toured the world to at the beginning and with the American Museum of the Moving Image in 1991. Through this project, our curation curatorial team aimed to update and re in integrate on the images of Shigeko Kubota as an artist who worked extensively in Japan and the US. This challenged us to see how Kubota, who was active on the big stage in the West rather than in Japan, could be reconnected with the Japanese context. Based on this, I wanted to re-examine the role of the artist Shigeko Kubota from a larger perspective that is in globally art hist global art history. And the next slide. First, I would like to talk about the practical aspects of this exhibition, which has been running in parallel with the pandemic. Hamada Mayumi from the Niigata Prefecture Museum of Modern Art, Nishikawa Mihoko from the Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo, and Yoshimoto Midori from New Jersey City University, a researcher living in the US, formed a curatorial team and completed two intensive research projects in New York, but one year before the opening of the exhibition, the pandemic struck the world. In the early summer of 2020, we considered the possibility of changing the exhibition dates, but all and uh, uh, so they're not able to and uh, trouble. So the, and in the early summer of 2020, we considered the possibility of changing the exhibition dates, but uh, and ultimately, and they decided not to change the exhibition schedule based on the circumstances of each museum. However, trouble and the mobility restrictions made some of the research difficult and at the Shigeko Kubota Foundation for Video Art in New York, the restoration and the maintenance of the artworks were also greatly affected. Due to these various reasons, 
we were not able to adequately carry out the survey of the works, and above all, it became extremely difficult to forecast the budget due to the soaring transportation costs and so on. We had to reselect the works to be exhibited and had to give up some of the late works. In the midst of the situation, and we were greatly helped and encouraged by the decision to receive support from Terra American Art Fund in the U.S., which gave us the largest amount of the money for the exhibition, and subsequently from the Agency for Cultural Affairs 2020 project to promote the international dissemination of outstanding contemporary art. I think that winning these two large grants symbolizes Kubota's artist nature. The Terra America Art Fund is for the purpose of further familiarizing, better understanding, and enjoying the art of the United States of America to audiences in Japan and the world, while the Agency for Cultural Affairs grant, as the name implies, is for a project that promote outstanding contemporary art in Japan. In fact, we wrote our application to the Terra American Art Fund, stating that Shigeko Kubota is an American artist, and to the Agency for Culture Affairs, Kubota is a Japanese artist. The fact that these prepositions are not contradictory is both the identity and the fascination of the artist Shigeko Kubota. We also received several other grants for this exhibition that the discussions and management of these grants across three museums with different governance systems. So the prefectural, metropolitan, and the national required a great deal of effort, almost as much as curating the exhibition. The lack of exhibition managers and administrators is once again a major weakness of Japanese museums, and I felt it keenly. We managed to transport the work under a tight schedule, and we installed the work while receiving online supervision from the Shigeko Kubota Foundation in New York. The artist had already passed away, and the, and the Shigeko Kubota Foundation and the lender for many of the video installation was unable to come to the site. So the issue of how to evaluate and guarantee the quality of the highly installation-oriented works using video was always central to the exhibition. To begin with, some of the works in the exhibition had never seen in action by the curatorial team or even the foundation staff before the exhibition in Niigata. In addition, where she was alive, Kubota herself was willing to create different versions of the same work for each exhibition venue, sometimes creating multiple, multiple versions of the same work and changing minor details, taking into account the characteristics of the venue and the conditions of the television monitors. From the 1970s to the 1990s and the 2000s, as the time goes on, new photographic equipment and the playback devices were introduced, and the Kubota changed some of her equipment to keep up with these changes. In other words, Kubota has been searching for the best solution for each exhibition location and making the exhibition work each time. We collected and compared as many instructions left by the artists and the photographers taken during the exhibition as possible. Though we were able to gather information on the placement of the works and the general setting itself, unfortunately, this was only a small part of the information was needed to know. The color of the TV monitor and how the light emitted by the TV monitor and circulate and through the space. Kubota's video sculptures accompanied by sound and movement, but what does normal movement and sound look like? No matter how many photos and blueprints I collected, there were still many things I couldn't figure out because it wasn't as easy as it is today to take video with a smartphone. What we were seeing online, they are seeing from all New York at the Shigeko Kubota Foundation is, of course, a video through the monitor. Moreover, the colors of the work seen through the monitor and the colors we would see on the site are different. And even though we are able to talk online, there were still barriers. Anyway, we spent more than 10 days discussing uh, the installation in Niigata and did our best to create a satisfactory exhibition. After that, we, the organizer of the exhibition, were able to deepen our understanding of the work through repeated visits of Osaka and Tokyo. Though exhibiting the work, we were able to grasp the totality of the work more fully and the outline of the work. 
and we were able to improve the operation of the exhibition by tweaking the lighting and other staging, staging and making minor adjustments to suit the venue and the devising ways to display the works more safely. In addition, many people who had actually seen Shigeko's work in the past or who had been associated with her in various ways sent us their comments and feedback on the works. And after seeing exhibition as showed as valuable materials such as photographs and videos, I'm convinced that the exhibition will lead to another step forward in the research of the artists in the future. I'm sure that documenting the exhibition in as many different ways as possible by multiple entities is an important element in supporting a thorough study of the artists and their works. So that as you see, uh, in the left foremost, on the left, uh, and in the, and it is uh, the, well, uh, the, and the show is the members of Poloxas and uh, Shiomi Eiko, and uh, the central one is uh, the big Anashuya Abe, and who is uh, who has been uh, the working and uh, to help the exhibition and uh, and uh, seeing uh, the, his hard work and uh, very closely, and. Uh, so the, uh, the the right one shows uh, the relatives and the families of uh, Kubota Shigeko. And uh, so that they and shared and the really and the precious uh, and, uh, and the information and the weather uh, which gave us and the really and important uh, the information. I just said many different ways and the multiple entities. So lastly, I would like to touch on this point a little more in relation to the aims and the significance of the exhibition. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Viva Video Kubota Shigeko exhibition, as I mentioned, and, uh, and the first solo exhibition in Japan in 30 years. We started with what seemed to be primary research on the artist, and we wanted to integrate the fragmented image of Kubota Shigeko that had been introduced until now, and making it something three-dimensional. Kubota's best-known works are the so the mainly so the which combined uh, the video and the cask butcher and used Maso Duchamp as a motif and the Duchampian series and uh, the best known. And after that, in particular after the nineteen eighties, uh, representative works such as the Three Mountains, River and Niagara were exhibited many times mainly in Europe and the US, but there were not many opportunities to exhibit these works in Japan. In addition, there has been no opportunity to show his her life works, the original channel video series Broken Diary from her early to the late period all together in one, pe one place. Although there are some video sculptures from her later years that could not be exhibited this time, the exhibition of these works together reveals a continuity of interest that transverses and Kubota's work in video sculptures. Moreover, video artist Kubota's origins lie in her strong will and activity to make a career out of sculpture rather than painting, as well as in Luxus, which she joined immediately after moving to the US and was proud to be a member of the rest of the life and in her collaborations with uh, women artists she later met. Kubota was also a writer who brought the latest information from New York to Japan in the early days of video art and was the curator of a video art anthology film archive from 1974 to 1982. In order to present a comprehensive exhibition of Kubota's activities, which have not been sufficiently introduced until now, we wanted to impress and upon viewers the importance of Kubota's work, which is not apparent from her work, but representing ephemera, such as letters, flyers, and postcards, copies of magazines and books and press release. And the exhibits are all basically the same, but the ephemera displayed at Niigata, Osaka, and Tokyo and the venues are slightly different. Some of the information has been rearranged and added as a tour progresses, and some of it reflects the local context of each venue. In Niigata, which is also the hometown of Kubota Shigeko, we exhibited only oil paintings from her high school days. That is, see, so the sunflower and in the left side, and that this paint and this was painted and when she was in high school student and the highly and the recognized and in the newspaper as well. And the right hand side and is and a sculpture work. So the and the title is unknown and that it was made when she was young. And the next one. 
So at the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo, and they use a collection exhibition to show the connection with the collection of her husband, Nam Jung Park, and Fluxus, which also reflects the knowledge of Abishuya, and engineer. And uh, an engineer, Abishuya, an engineer who is a production partner, Pike and Kubota, and, and who has been carefully researched over the years by the curatorial team of Nishikawa. And uh, so the, at IAM, Kubota has participated in two point the group exhibitions in the history of the museum. One was the centrifugal force of sculpture and in 1992, and the other one was Marcel Duchamp and the 20th Mu Country Art in 2004. And, so the duchamp Pierre series were on loan from Hara Museum of Contemporary Art and Toyama Prefecture Art of Art. So this is the third time we have borrowed works from the same museums for the Kubota Shigeko exhibition. So that they gave us an instruction how to deal with the works, and uh, uh, so including instruction and the care of the works and the letters to Shimatsu Hiko. The research of uh, so they also revealed the instruction to create a different version of the video sculpture and from the one uh, that first made in the U.S. and the Harvey Museum of Contemporary Art, then Toyama Prefecture Museum of Art co cooperated greatly in the research. The impression that the viewers will get from the exhibitions at the three venues and uh, very different. This is not to say that one is more correct than the other, but to say that there are three discourses of the artists of Kubota Shigeko. A good work or artist is multifaceted and is appeal artistic and criticality in, rela in relation to art historical uh, that can be infinite. In other words, the significance of artists and works of art become more three-dimensional and easier to connect to other contexts when different entities conduct their own research. In this respect, the solo exhibition of Kubota Shigeko at MoMA and in the summer and winter of 2021 and announced earlier was exciting for us as well, except for the fact that, that we were not able to see it in person in the pandemic. I think it's important. And for uh, the so that at the same time, uh, I hope that multiple, uh, so that it is important and to pluralize and the discourse and in this way. And uh, so that I hope that multiple subjects will speak out in this way and that each one of them will record in multiple ways, such as uh, through photographs, video, audio, and interviews, so they, they can be more easily utilized by researchers while preparing for this research, for this exhibition. How many times I had regretted that there were no video recordings of the photographs of the exhibition venues. With that in mind, we have taken video records of the exhibition for three venues. In Niigata, thanks to the cooperation of Art 360 degrees, a video recording is now available. And in Osaka, a 20-minute video recording is available online. Thus, it goes without saying that online meetings, use of cloud storage, and online information dissemination media such as YouTube will enable further collaboration and research. Although our research was limited in many ways, there is still a lot of information about Kubota's work around the world that we were not able to track down this time, such as information about her exhibition in Germany and other European countries where she has built her career since the 1970s. Last but not least, this exhibition will be held at the Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo until February 23. For those you were able to travel, I hope you will be able to see uh, able to visit the museum and see the works in person. Well, thank you very much for your presentation, Ms. Hashimoto. So all four participants, uh, specialists, and uh, gave a presentation uh, so about their case studies based on their exhibitions and activities. And they have provided many discussion points for the discussions to follow. No. So we would like to have a short break and so that uh, you can digest uh, their input uh, during the break and so that uh, we can uh, start a discussion based on your questions uh, that you have uh, sent to us. Now, I would like to yes, uh, turn the microphone back to the MC and so let's meet again uh, after the break and Secretariat, please. Oh. Well, thank you very much uh, for your presentations, presenters. Now, 
And we would like to yes uh, restart the session uh, from 11 o'clock Japan time. So until 11 o'clock, we'll have a short break. And thank you very much. Okay, so all members are here, yes, on the screen. So we had a, a one and a half uh, presentation hour of a presentation uh, period, and then I have picked up four points for discussion today. And uh, sorry, it's my clock, yes. <laughs> well, and then so the uh, so contemporary arts uh, of the, the surviving uh, artists and then those uh, who have passed away. But uh, so what's in common uh, is uh, so whether uh, the exhibition so will be able to see, to use uh, restored uh, products or the preserved products. And so what kind of methods are used? And the second point is uh, the information uh, of the uh, about the method and uh, some of the challenges uh, of uh, uh, preparing for exhibitions. So this. Uh, uh, so competition report uh, is different. So we have to have the, the different uh, sort of uh, information and how we can archive those contents and uh, if there is any optimum way, uh, we would like to discuss that. And we are now in the era of uh, a pandemic. So we are using remote uh, communication and during the pandemic and so so because of the use of the remote communication and uh, some of the exhibitions uh, may have been able to uh, to be realized. So we would like to get uh, some input uh, from other participants as well. And the fourth point is the techniques and uh, of the uh, preservation. And so with the development of uh, preservation technologies and conservation technologies, there may be a possibility uh, to delve into uh, the otherwise uh, the unrecognized artist uh, products and, in, uh, and to be able to be, uh, the, introduce them uh, to future generations or the, to the wider public. That is going to be very effective in uh, uh, discovering uh, so uh, more and more artists. Uh, so based on those four points, I would like to have uh, the discussion. And first, I would like to ask uh, uh, Adachi-san. And so you do the research and conservation uh, of uh, uh, the contents, and uh, this is what CCJ does. And then so you have produced a lot of uh, positive results. And first, I would like to ask, so so, uh, in the environment of the uh, the Japanese experimental uh, the film art, and so what is uh, quite uh, lacking? What is needed? And what are you doing in order to improve the situation? And uh, please share with us uh, your impression of the current situation, and also uh, give us some suggestions. Well. Uh, I used to work with the MoMA, and before that, uh, I worked uh, with the uh, Electronics uh, Intermix, EAI and ED uh, Video Art Archive uh, was uh, uh, where I worked, and in there, I uh, uh, the, uh, worked on the the, uh, the screening program of the Japanese video art, uh, and so something that told me at the time that so video archive, uh, so EAI. So Japan did not have the EAI in Japan. So that was the starting point of my activity. Uh, and now I'm running CCJ in the United States. So EAI is not the sole organization. Uh, there are so archives like a video data bank or museums. And uni universities also perform uh, the uh, uh, the role of archiving uh, the uh, experimental film works. And also, uh, so they uh, are proactive in supporting uh, the video archives. And so there's even uh, grassroots activities started as early as uh, the late 1980s. So the similar uh, uh, movements uh, uh, have not been seen in Japan, unfortunately. And an independent uh, and uh, non-profit organization like ours, and and those uh, uh, who are yes said to be activists uh, in uh, 
the video art, and those have started uh, archiving uh, the video art. And so, uh, so that was the direction uh, uh, that has started in Japan. So, uh, so but without uh, so uh, the uh, deep rooted uh, the activities. Uh, so we have not been able to do it. So therefore, so uh, CCJ have started uh, that activity. So did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Well, so probably, so in relation to this uh, uh, issue and the Tasaka-san and the video film and the video art in Japanese uh, uh, museums, and are there any activities uh, that specializes the art uh, video art in uh, uh, Japan and uh, so about uh, the uh, Japanese uh, uh, film art and uh, so uh, working with the Tokyo Photographic Art Museum uh, so do you have do you have you seen any challenges uh, you muted uh, oh sorry so in the case of Japan so museums uh, themselves and the uh, so this uh, Tokyo uh, the Photographic Art Museum is relatively new, and so those mu museums uh, have started to be built uh, in late uh, 1980s in uh, Kawasaki City or Aichi, uh, the uh, art and culture center, and the Fujiko Nakaya. Uh, so I used to work with uh, Fujiko Nakaya at our studio, and since the end of 1970s and early 1980s, and she started her activities uh, independently. So she started dealing with the uh, the support of video art in Japan, and then uh, so when uh, Japan started to have uh, the large number of museums and. Um, in the movement of uh, the increasing uh, the video art, and uh, she uh, contributed uh, to some of those activities. And so, in my presentation, I talked about the performance-based uh, um, things. And so, I'm quite interested uh, in performance-based uh, elements, and and also the. The things that are documented in films, and then so sometimes one might uh, wonder uh, what the reality was, and uh, documentation and uh, archiving of the history is uh, still uh, unknown. So of course, so I think there is uh, there have been some groundwork done in Japan, but that has not been shared well enough. Uh, and even among uh, museums. So therefore, based on such situation, we really have to get back to the question of uh, what we should do. So therefore, we are organ organizing uh, events and exhibitions. And Ibi Seizozai and Okamura Keiko uh, uh, has uh, uh, yes, uh, organized a festival uh, in Tokyo, and the Film art or video art in Japan, and but uh, so we really have to come to the question of what we can do about video art uh, in Japan. So her exhibition posed that question, and I I I don't know if I could answer your question, uh, you know, right way. But so the uh, Eric, uh, so I'd like to ask Erica and uh, so you're working uh, uh, for MoMA and then you have uh, helped establish the video art uh, uh, department and then you have uh, also established uh, a method of uh, the collection uh, and exhibition of uh, video art and uh, preservation and archiving at the MoMA and structure and policies. Uh, so if you yes, uh, can share some of the structures and policies of archiving of video work, please uh, let us know. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for having me. Um, I have to tell you, UK, I don't hear a translation. Oh. That's a big problem. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, at the moment, you uh, you uh, are the one of the person to start the media and performance department. 
and also your involvement in the uh, mission and the uh, idea of the uh, collection of those uh, genre. So, and also you are uh, the curator to organize a uh, Kubota Shigeko uh, exhibition. So could you please tell us about the uh, idea of your department and how the kind of structure of the other department for the collection and uh, conservation and those ideas. It'd be great to hear as an uh, example, yeah. Sure, absolutely. Do you want me also to speak a little bit about how our practices may or may not have changed after the pandemic or keep that for another? Yeah, that'd be great to hear. Yeah. Of course. So, okay, of course, of course, of course. So um, the Department of Media and Performance, as we know it, has undergone a few different phases. Um, some of you may know a little bit about the history, but originally at the museum, it was the Department of Film. Then it became the Department of Film and Media. Um, and then that department split into two. So now we have the film cinema department as its own entity. Um, and what we have now is the Department of Media, which then became um, Department of Media and Performance Art, and now is Department of Media and Performance. So it's undergone several different um, name changes, um, but yes, I joined the museum um, in 2009, um, and I'm sorry, 2007, um, and the department had just um, become its own entity. Um, so we really had to create um, our own um, standards for caring for this type of work. Um, of course, Barbara London had been acquiring um, single channel videos and early video installations um, for many years. Um, and those works were coming in through the film department. Um, so when our department was created, uh, we, we sort of had to um, go to the film archive and really parse out what belongs in the film department, what belongs in media. And that's still a, an ongoing conversation um, and an ever evolving conversation. Um, so we started by writing a collection manual um, and determining um, standards for cataloging, standards for describing the um, creating medium lines. Um, and what we learned very early on, and this is a theme that sort of keeps coming up in um, several recent discussions, is how collaborative the preservation, care, maintenance, and exhibition of time-based media really is um, for several reasons. Um, exhibition, maintenance, preservation are so deeply intertwined um, mainly because we often cannot fully understand the needs of this type of work until it is fully realized. So in the museum, we are always discussing, trying to understand um, sometimes our need to preserve a work motivates us to present it, um, to exhibit it as soon as possible, um, and vice versa. Um, I would say that now, post-pandemic, this collaboration is... Uh, more important than ever. Um, and um, as we continue or, or begin to really start navigating how to best present this type of work um, on a virtual platform, um, this collaboration is now expanding to include other departments and other areas of the museum um, as well. So I hope that's a helpful first answer. Sure, yeah. And, uh, and uh, in other department, and specifically, so the what kind of department? And uh, could... So you said different department. Uh, could you tell us about the uh, specific department which the MoMA has to work with you? Like a conservation department? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm just getting an instruction to select. Oh, that's my cat. <laughs> Um, hang on one second. I have to see. Oh, I see it. Hold on one. Moment. Okay. Um, 
Yes. So at MoMA, we are so fortunate to have a very strong media conservation department. Um, we have two um, dedicated media conservators um, and also our chief conservator, Kate Lewis, um, is a media conservator as well. That is her background. Um, so we're lucky to have a really robust um, support structure at the museum. Um, and just to speak a little bit, I don't know how detailed you want me to get, but um, we of course also work very closely with our audio visual department, our audio visual technicians. And the distinction is that our audio visual um, technicians install the works, but our media conservators are the ones always preparing the media. So when we need to do something as simple as create an exhibition file from um, a master file, that's always done by the conservator. Um, so that's something that's important to us at the museum um, because the conservator has the background knowledge to understand what is closest to the original master material, why might a file not look the way that it should look or as good as it could look. Um, and really just the, for us, it's just so important to connect the display to the preservation piece. Um, we, you know, it, it, for us, it's... it's um, difficult to imagine really separating this out. So we work closely with media conservation, with audio visual, um, and then of course with exhibition design. And now that we're thinking about um, remote access in new ways, also our digital media team. But that's a conversation that's sort of still taking us a lot of. Thank you. And uh... So the, uh, you have the conservators and you are in-house, uh, the in-house department of the conservators. So the, what about uh, the Ansan? So the, in your case, uh, and how you are uh, working on the conservation and uh, the before you contribute them uh, to MoMA. And so the before that, uh, so let me... So that let me re, uh, the correct my comment. So that in Japan, uh, the independent activities I have, n so that I don't want to say uh, that there is no uh, independent activities in Japan, as uh, Hasegawa and uh, uh, the Tasaka mentioned, uh, the video on center, uh, the video, uh, so the scan and the Niwaka, and uh, they are and in Japan, but uh, and in and the. U.S. and uh, some grassroots activities and uh, and voiced and in a collective way. So that as a result, uh, and so the uh, the subsidizing are uh, the and uh, the organization and the preserving uh, the foundation and it's a national one, national institution and the foundation was established and uh, in the late nineteen eighties and in the case of NPF, so. So the and the collective activities, and was, and uh, so the served as an a supporter. So that I I would like to and those activities in a collective way and didn't exist in Japan. Uh, they are the and to the question from Kamiya Sam. So that at the CCA, so the. So the subsidies at once and we receive subsidies one by one. So that we so that and pick up uh, the work one by one for preservation and the method. So that as I and I touched on uh, my in my presentation and from this side. So the uh, the when we organize and the research and to ask the research, and in that case and in the case of twenty and. 16 and 2018 and sent an archivist and to and the research on the studio and in New York and uh, on the archivist and from the US so the so the instead of uh, in uh, in addition to and uh, using the arc American archivist, and so that it serves as a kind of networking and uh, with uh, archivist in Tokyo. That was uh, the main objectives and uh, from the beginning, and as a result, so the uh, the network has been uh, established. I think and uh, it's a really good thing. And uh, in the process of research, and after that, and the report was issued. And in the, uh, the, there is a list of uh, the works to be re preserved, and so that's uh, the during the and the and the 
uh, the discussion with the artist and the which and uh, is uh, the so the which works and should be prioritized and we need to so the pick up one or two and within the uh, the and the budget and the really uh, so the very as a one by one basis and uh, so the nigger uh, the and the film and digital busters and uh, as a result and it cannot be preserved at CCJ so instead uh, so that we are uh, working on uh, in a collaborative model and uh, to be preserved and uh, thank you and uh, so work sharing and it is uh, and uh, to and uh, with and uh, working with uh, an expert and uh, in that area and uh, to move up to the next stage and uh, thank you Uh, of the uh, the artist so so when you yes uh, do you have different approaches uh, to the formal presentation or informal uh, presentation uh, of a uh, uh, work of art and then what kind of different approaches are you taking for preservation and restoration for the works of art uh, and uh, expanded cinema. So I, I can talk about expanded cinema. And well, basically, uh, so we have to get information from the, the artist uh, himself or herself. And formal uh, oral history and informal oral history. So when we do a research, and so uh, those uh, research so the forms the basis of the uh, the. Uh, a preparation for an exhibition. In the case of the, the Mr. Gulliver, and uh, we did not have any surviving information. So therefore, we had to research the, the data and information uh, the artist himself had. So we re repeated uh, a number of uh, uh, interviews, and every interview uh, was recorded. So by the video, so many hours of the the video of interviews with him, and the method of uh, the display had to be uh, carefully planned. So there was some document uh, telling that uh, so what uh, piece of art was uh, yes uh, the the displayed in what order, but uh, so for example when we were doing the research and. Uh, so when we were making preparations, and we used a fixed camera uh, so that uh, we can record uh, all the process uh, of the making of this uh, uh, the, the, the plan. And so so that became a huge uh, the, the stock of uh, the video. And the artist himself wanted a copy of it uh, because he was a conceptual artist. And so probably, so. So he said, yeah, that, that could form uh, one of the artwork. And so the way to record uh, was uh, s such uh, that uh, that could be uh, this, uh, stored. And uh, FCCJ CCJ and so uh, in also interviewed uh, Mr. Gulliver. And uh, so there were also interviews uh, that could be yes, uh, made public. And so they come uh, yes, uh, hand in hand. Thank you very much. So uh, I th I may be uh, yes maybe okay that the uh, the uh, okay uh, to ask uh, the interview uh, the, do the interview for the surviving artist but then so when you uh, organize an event for the uh, the shigeko uh, the, the uh, such as uh, the person has already deceived and uh, what kind of uh, yes uh, method did you use yeah may I ask uh, may I answer the question so yes. Yeah, interviewing the artist itself is uh, 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 quite important. Uh, uh, so, and after uh, the presentation of that, uh, and so we have had uh, some record of her uh, the works in the early 1970s, and but there are still some people who were audience at that time. So 
although there were few, but there are still、uh, some records of her、uh, works and performance. Before she went to the United States, she put up、uh, some very important performances in Japan. For example, the Gaimara Takahiko, Adisho Mimieko, and so. So we went to uh, those uh, artists uh, for an interview, but then they could not remember everything about uh, uh, the uh, Shigeko's,、uh, Kubota Shigeko's、uh, performance. But, so, that ended, so, so what we did was,、uh, was an、uh, interview, and、uh, we recorded the interview, and、uh, we took notes and、uh, stocked、uh, them as documents. And so, What to do with those uh, materials uh, have not been、uh, decided, but then we have done、uh, a number of interviews in order to collect information about Kubota Shigeko. Thank you very much. So,、uh, so interviewing and、uh, the, the artist and then the archiving, and that John,、uh, Jonas, the knowledge base uh, uh, was uh, released. John Jonas was、uh, born in 19.、Uh, Uh, 30s, and then so about the same、uh, generation as、uh, Kubota Shigeko, and、uh, he has、uh, received a Kyoto Award, and that person is still、uh, alive, and he was、uh, also a researcher and also the lecturer. And so,、uh, what kind of、uh, uh, exhibition、uh, and display method he used, and that was、uh, yes, compiled by the、uh, universities.、And So, so he made it an open resource, and there is a, a link.、Uh, Diaz Beacon uh, uh, just made it、uh, public, and so we, we learned that that was going to be released, and universities and institutions for art studies, and, and also the nonprofit organization. If we could collect all these information and put it uh, uh, together so that people can use it as a, as a useful resource, And I would like to send you the link through the check. So, universities and academic institutions, are there any yes,、uh, examples of working together with、uh, such institutions? Furuhashi Kenji's、uh, exhibition and、uh, the preservations, I think some universities did it、uh, for Furuhashi Kenji's、uh, work. Uh, uh, Erika san,、uh, do you have any、uh, comment about this? Um, well, I don't know if this is、um, this is slightly different、um, than what you're asking, but I don't know if people are aware. There's a website called Matters in Media Art,、um, which is or was a project designed to provide guidelines for the care of time based、um, media art.、Mm -hmm. And、um, It was created by curators, conservators, registrars, technologists from the New Art Trust, MoMA, SF MoMA, and Tate.、Um, so, this is not an example of、um, an, an artist's knowledge base, but it's a place,、um, although a little bit outdated,、um, it was created in 2003, but the general guidelines and principles,、um, the fundamentals, are still very relevant. And I, I like to point people there. All right. Now,、uh, let's turn to another direction.、Uh, Hashimoto san and Pepe Nick san. So, you,、uh, you got information from Kubota Shigeko、uh, Video Archive Foundation and,、uh, in、uh, preparing for the exhibitions. And the video is、uh, the, uh, the sculptures. And so, So, sometimes、uh, you, you need to、uh, get the help of technologists, and, but because of the pandemic, you cannot travel to the real sites. But then you used、uh, the remote system、uh, to make prepara preparations. And、uh, Tasaka san uh, also uh, said that uh, the, the artist could not travel. But because of this pandemic, so the new uh, the, uh, the movement、uh, might have been started. So, So, the pandemic is not just about、uh, the, the bad thing, and、uh, there may be some、uh, good development based on that, right? Well, so many、uh, museums in、uh, Japan, so including、uh, my own organization, and so they do not necessarily、uh, deal with new media, and unfortunately in Japan, so, so, 
So not many muse uh, museums have uh, the specialized registrar Allah. And so the only the museums uh, specialized in such a field uh, have the technologist. So therefore, if museum want to start it, so they do not know uh, what to start with. And so what can I do to start? But, but sometimes uh, we need to uh, get started and uh, even without enough resources. For example, so when we uh, organize an exhibition and in some places in Japan, so we have to have the Wi-Fi first. So for Americans, it it sounds absurd. However, the so many people are now using cloud Wi-Fi, but and so how about using it at our museums? And uh, how about uh, security? How can we uh, ensure the security? So we have to overcome some of the challenges or concerns so that people can share the data and information. You really have to provide an, an, uh, a situation where everybody is forced to think about a, a way to do it. And in this case, so therefore, another thing, in case of the Kubota and the Shigeko exhibitions, that we don't have an in-house and the technicians. So the, and so the outside of the museum, and we find, and we and and find and uh, the technician and from the outside, and through and them and we acquired and the information and the knowledge, and so that and we can utilize that, and and in the future and uh, and lead to and uh, uh, so the uh, the give other uh, uh, the information how to deal with the new media in the next time, and so and those that type of uh, the network uh, the experience and the knowledge how to and uh, how to uh, so the accumulate them and in the museum i think it's a good opportunity and to acquire that precious information thank you and uh, this time so the uh, the uh, the different museums and uh, and in so that we have uh, many curators uh, and they are in Fukuoka and from all over Japan. So the possibilities of uh, the remote uh, an exhibition and in Japan and even in Japan and the re so the so the Wycombe has a really specific laboratory and so the and the Yoshizaki san and from Fortunem exhibition and so that it's uh, an artist and in Singapore. And the production and the, and the display was uh, and organized and uh, and online remote basis. So, the, could you share and uh, your and uh, uh, your experience as a case study? And uh, thank you. So that I found uh, uh, the presentations of the and the really so the media art at our organization at our museum and a time based media the production and the uh, other we have been dealing with that and uh, uh, so on the long uh, the term and perspective and uh, to create uh, and co cre uh, the collection and then that's not what I've been doing we have been working on and the preservation in the perspective of uh, the long-term preservation and and it seems to be a little bit missing so this is a challenge for us so the so the that there is an in-house team and to create and work, and so the which uh, that helps and to create, uh, uh, to create and reconstruct. So the I'd, I'd like to and share the expression. Uh, the ex so the voice of Boyd and words and it's a production of VR and and a multiple and a production. So that this as for and this and work and for tuning. So that before the pandemic, and so that he came and to the venue at just one time, and after that, and the and the, due to the restriction of the traveling and the mobility, and so the production and uh, the display, so that we and uh, and we did that and for him for the artist. And the production and the art uh, and the team, uh, the, uh, in addition to our uh, the artist, our engineer, and uh, and all those other engineers from the outside, and uh, they are based in Japan. So the and uh, except for the artist, and so that this and uh, exhibition was realized by the Japan team, and after that, and uh, in Kyoto, uh, we and. Uh, 
travel, the, the exhibition, and traveled to and Kyoto and then and to South Korea. And uh, in uh, every case, uh, and the artist himself and uh, couldn't visit the venue and uh, this production and uh, using uh, the real and the virtual reality and uh, animation and on uh, a 3D. So the uh, the through this uh, so the on uh, the multiple and the production process and the eight uh, the engineers uh, are and uh, irresponsible and in. So that at the same time, and the proceed, and the drummer, uh, so and this uh, the script has been uh, the and to, uh, so that this so that the artist didn't have a control. So the uh, in case of home tuning, so that he and instead of uh, having the uh, whole control, and uh, instead parameter. So the, as uh, the artist uh, uh, says and uh, uses this word and the parameter and it is uh, and a set and each team and uh, is so the based on that and uh, each parameter and each team and uh, is and uh, establish and uh, realize on um, the part of the work and after that uh, and the accumulation of and uh, from uh, the those uh, the and the teams and uh, dealing with each parameter was and uh, realized and uh, in the venue and uh, in case so the other uh, if on uh, the uh, the artist uh, wanted to have on uh, the and the control and so that this couldn't have been realized but uh, and it, and he and lost any kind of control and over his work, and so that this and the exhibition was realized and in and these and the circumstances, and and in and the re, so the, and the resourcing and the archiving, so the and the, let me share my and the situation of my, our organization, our institution, so the why come, so the. So the forming the collection and instead of so the and the forming of the collection so the but and the production and the production is our mission. So the three and the visited and the three venues so the fortune and the exhibit, uh, so the visited, and uh, so that in each venue the format of the venue has been on it. Uh, so the subject to change, as uh, Hashimoto mentioned, so the by as uh, the visiting and a different uh, venue, and we could and deepen the understanding and the core, and so the core, so the how far and how much we can tolerate and or and allow, and so that those, uh, so the experience and the information and is accumulated and among the, uh, the technical team as well. And uh, so the visiting and the tour exhibition is and uh, really important in that sense. And but said, and so the uh, so the you so the using and the uh, so the electronic media and uh, uh, and the device and so the sometimes uh, uh, so the software and the developed a couple of years ago and it can be obsolete and no longer used. So that we need to. And I consider that, so the and we have to do at the maintenance, so that every time we do, and why, so that we are, so that very much as so the changed and our shift and of our con, so and so that this is an amikami seiko, uh, so the passed away and in, and so the, so the hard work and how. And uh, this work and uh, should be reconstructed, and uh, this gives uh, the momentum, and uh, for us and uh, to work on updating of our uh, the preserving, preservation, and so that we have uh, the laboratory on our own laboratory. This the advantage of is, uh, so the, so that we have. Uh, and if we have uh, so the staff members and uh, who engaged in the original work uh, and they could join in, and if not, so that we uh, so that maybe so that as why come uh, so that now and uh, really an tentative way, so we need to uh, find uh, really a uh, permanent solution. So the but uh, and the shift uh, the of uh, and the awareness and 
and we now and ongoing and this is an ongoing process and so so the when so that this is a collaboration of us with uh, artist so that so the what kind of equipment device so the how long and uh, this can be used so the on at the from the on uh, long term and a perspective uh, we need to and uh, a so the as long as and uh, we concentrate on the and uh, the, uh, the work and in and just in behind, uh, just in front of us, it is difficult, but it needs to have a, a longer perspective. And how much uh, we can update, and uh, this is something to do with the uh, ethical issue, but uh, uh, so that this, uh, so the ethical issue, so the how to, uh, so the guarantee the identity of the work, and how to, or the whether and to keep the original equipment or device, or as long as the uh, the core of the work is preserved and we could uh, and change on uh, the device or so that this is a legal issue so that i uh, so that ask for the advice and uh, for the uh, the, uh, the legal advisor and so that of course and it's a case of case by case but uh, by accumulating and uh, this know how and uh, the knowledge now uh, so that we have been discussing and uh, with an uh, archive and uh, members but open source and agreement or therefore uh, this specifies or spec specification so that to be uh, inherited or how to archive all those information so that we would like to work on that uh, and that's what we have been discussing Thank you very much. And uh, Erica San, and uh, they use the term and uh, uh, preservation, care, and maintenance. And those points are quite important. And Adachi San also mentioned the, the importance of collaboration uh, with uh, technologists as well. And uh, Yoshizaki San from YCAM also repeated the importance of those things. And no, uh, so the media specified uh, the, uh, videos and so there may be some uh, artists, uh, so not necessarily uh, the, uh, specified. And uh, Norman, Kiroke uh, list uh, the exhibition, Kiroke, and uh, but uh, when when uh, people uh, collected uh, these ones, and so so in the future you may be able to to just share with you and uh, share with us. Uh, 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 can you hear me? And so I'm just uh, joining you by my voice. And so I'm from uh, Aki Makiguchi uh, from Kyoto at uh, the Museum of Modern Art. And I'm at the museum now. And is there going to be a video of me? Uh, um, well, well, from uh, the uh, April last year, Kirokurist, uh, the e exhibition uh, uh, was uh, shown, and he himself and the studio staffs uh, could not come to uh, Kyoto. But then we had to have an exhibition uh, entirely remotely, and and. So we considered uh, the uh, the holding it uh, in 2020, and so that was uh, yes, postponed to 2021 uh, because it was very difficult uh, for people to travel overseas. Uh, so, so that was discovered uh, just before uh, the planned opening of the exhibition. At first, uh, the artist himself was not uh, quite keen on holding it remotely because it was a very first uh, uh, experience. But, uh, however, it was very difficult to postpone uh, that exhibition again for the second time. So, therefore, so it was, so we yes, uh, just insisted, uh, so instead of uh, having nothing, uh, we should have uh, the exhibition without you. And be because the exhibition uh, was the only uh, opportunities for the artist uh, to uh, uh, show uh, their uh, work and so 
Because sometimes uh, some beauty of the, the work uh, cannot be told by the catalog alone. So, so, so we wanted uh, the, her work uh, to be viewed by Japanese audience. And so uh, the artist uh, herself, and even after her death, and we want to uh, maintain uh, her work of art. So I, I told her that uh, it is quite important uh, to uh, show her work uh, to the Japanese audience. So the artist uh, the, uh, is, uh, consented uh, to the plan. Uh, there were some advantages on our side. And so curators and the technologists of uh, videos and then uh, we had uh, some people who are quite knowledgeable about her work and and uh, Kiroki list uh, the work and so there was a uh, is a technologist uh, of a uh, video uh, so who was uh, completely yes uh, is uh, commissioned uh, to the work and so we used that person as a central uh, person and the Kiroki list uh, herself uh, had a lot of uh, experience working with Japanese, and then she had a good trust about Japanese people's work. So uh, the staff uh, on the site are uh, very uh, committed to the work, and then they are uh, quite meticulous in making preparations. And however, the uh, sharing information with them. So, so. So about one month before uh, the exhibition uh, preparation uh, started, so uh, we had to have the Skype meeting uh, so several times a week, and a number of uh, Skype meetings uh, were held in order to get information and also build trust uh, among each other. And so uh, the beauty of having a remote uh, uh, program is that uh, uh, Technology, technological uh, the specification and instructions uh, uh, can be yes, uh, yes visualized. So we are going to so get uh, so everything written and then uh, check uh, and then confirm. So so all the the dimensions are is precisely drawn and then screen size uh, uh, to the millimeter uh, yes uh, level and. So based on that instruction and based on that visualization, and we worked uh, to prepare the exhibition. So that document that we created at that time uh, may be of uh, good use for future generations to come. So that was a good part of it. And But uh, there was a challenge in that nobody has seen uh, the new work. And because the exhibition had to feature the new uh, uh, artwork, which has never been displayed in Japan before, so so we learned that the artist had the new uh, installation, and it must have been very difficult. And so, so even uh, if the artist herself knew about the, the footprint uh, of the installation and. So it's quite difficult uh, to precisely plan uh, the exhibition uh, hall or exhibition uh, space, and so. So, yeah, I think uh, so. It has, has something to do with uh, the, uh, the yes, uh, uh, the, the responsibility. Yes, so how much responsibility can curators ha can have, or the discretion can that curator have about uh, display. Uh, of installations and the National uh, Museum of uh, Con Contemporary Art, uh, the FISOR, uh, was uh, yes, uh, collected. Uh, uh, and uh, this time, so that uh, work was uh, displayed. And that experience uh, will uh, uh, be used as a good uh, advantage uh, when we plan the next uh, exhibition. Thank you very much. And so. So I hear a lot of uh, yes uh, experiences from you about uh, yes remote uh, uh, preparations, but then everybody says that the the close uh, collaboration and discussion uh, to build trust between curators and uh, all individuals uh, is uh, involved in the exhibition was quite important. So in the end, uh, so so what's uh, important uh, about uh, the ex uh, exhibition? Uh, uh, was uh, yes, repeated or yes, uh, redefined. So in 
every junior and the collaboration and the, the relations of trust uh, was very important. Now, so we talked about the, the technical issues, but then we would like to talk about some conceptual side of it, preservation and uh, maintenance. And so, so uh, there. So because of preservation, uh, we may be able to have a chance to show uh, the illusionary uh, uh, work or a relatively unseen uh, artist's work uh, to future audience. Uh, so Gubata Shigeko's exhibition is one of the good examples. And some work of art of the past generation uh, can revive because of that uh, exhibition uh, based on uh, the uh, preserved work. I think the uh, re-examination or uh, re-evaluation of the past uh, artist uh, may begin. So because of restoration work and preservation work and and will uh, uh, help uh, the uh, the art world of different world, uh, different uh, uh, countries and different cities uh, may come into uh, uh, the view. So uh, Erika San already has uh, the Asian artists' uh, uh, work in MoMA's collection. And so so that changed the lineup of the uh, artworks in MoMA. And so would you like to yes, uh, share with us uh, some comment from you? Uh, Erika San, please. Um, the Shigeko Kubota exhibition um, includes um, three, what are now three collection works. Um, and the rest of the works in the exhibition are loans from the foundation. Um, but I would say that um, in terms of our work with the collection, as we continue the process of digitizing MoMA's video collection, this exercise often leads us to new discoveries, rediscoveries, uh, new conversations. And this is one reason why I love my work with MoMA's video collection so much, because we have the opportunity to elevate artworks made long ago and make them accessible again. Um, in the case of Shigeko Kubota, she was not unknown, she was not undiscovered in her own time, but the dominant historical narrative had largely eclipsed her. Um, contemporary preservation initiatives certainly helped to put her work back on the map. Um, yeah. So the, what about other presenters? And uh, may I have your uh, comments? And so Hashimoto-san and were uh, involved in uh, the Kubota Shige exhibition and uh, the, uh, the feedback and uh, the audience. So the so the uh, some people know the name and uh, of the so the name of the Kubota, but uh, and not and uh, familiar with the work, and so that even those and uh, who are engaged in artwork, and uh, but so the really and uh, refreshing, and uh, this is the opportunity of uh, discovering, and that uh, and, uh, and her works, and uh, that the uh, and uh, feedback I received, and so in that sense, uh, and it is and uh, really and a good opportunity and a good thing, and uh, to and uh, promote and the uh, discovery rediscovery of the and. Uh, buried an artist and uh, uh, so the in parallel and uh, with the uh, the mainstream and uh, there is uh, the Japanese and uh, up art and uh, history and and uh, there is another and uh, in and uh, Kyoto and Osaka and another and uh, in Fukuoka and in many uh, so the and uh, different and uh, art uh, so the history in local level level so that which is uh, the most influential and uh, that's not uh, the issue so that they are uh, so that uh, so that maybe uh, intertwined to each other and and uh, to host an exhibition and uh, in and um, different uh, the venues and provide uh, the bilingual uh, catalog and we tried to, uh, to do that as hard as possible and so the so the not on a firm on the museums on the platform on a publisher and engaged in that and so through those process and maybe 
and this uh, so the exhibition can be a reference and in the future and to help and them and to rediscover and the and Kubota Shigeko and expand the possibilities and the possibilities in the future. That's what I feel. Thank you. So, the, any uh, comments? And so, the maybe. Uh, so, the, I received uh, a couple of questions from the venue. So, the all and the online programs were uh, included and or established uh, in uh, and to acquire and so the different audience and to and deliver and online. So, the, what about and the copyright and of the, and the media? So the what about how do you deal with the copyright issue, and so uh, whether the challenge and in uh, so the online exhibition. So the, this is um, the question from Namba Sachiko San. So, so the maybe so that this is a different point and from my and uh, so the my and the presentation. So the ABC and the film festival, I've been doing that. I've been dealing with that on the copyright issue and the digital copyright issue as well. So the YouTube or free and the online and the distribution is uh, and being and really common. But what about and the preserving the copyright of the work and, and present it? So the digital and the copyright and, uh, and to be cleared uh, has been cleared on the online and in the museum exhibition, and we have been working on this and on the uh, the, uh, the film festival as well. But the quality of streaming and is uh, uh, the much so the and how much uh, so the depends on how much and uh, you and uh, invest and uh, in uh, the production. So that that's what I learned by examining the quality of that. So there may be a uh, different uh, environment and uh, they are watching. And uh, so the how, okay, so the, we need to consider the difference in quality and uh, depend on the, uh, the digital environment of each viewer. So that that is uh, the changes we have gone through for the couple of years. So the phase of online, the online phase itself has been uh, changing yeah, a lot. So the, and so that many people think as long as it's online, everything and seem to be and, uh, and the same. But uh, so that by examining it, uh, and we found and we realized uh, and the different exist uh, in the online platform. So that that should be uh, addressed uh, and by museums as well. Thank you. So the copyright issue and it is. And so there is uh, and posing another issue and another difficult issue. So the program and uh, during the Corona crisis, I got. So the so that do you have any and uh, program and uh, to be utilized and uh, even after uh, the Corona crisis, so the sustainability. And so, so the and now and the mobility and the body of mobility is re-examined, and so. So that this is a, a question and from Kataoka Mami san. So the, so the things and to be utilized and continued. So that may be an, so associated with the last question. So there may be uh, so the interpretation. Interpretation and is an issue. And so the way we want to go global. So the online interview so the and uh, usually and uh, so that it is difficult the budget strain a budget uh, and a restriction and we couldn't invite them and uh, physically but and uh, using the online so that we could utilize uh, the online and uh, to invite and uh, multiple and so the artists so that we could and uh, have done that and uh, before pandemic but uh, so the when uh, so the ju uh, during the pandemic we were uh, kind of forced to do that and so, so that it was and uh, convincing, and it gave and uh, convincing. So that and uh, through and uh, this experience, and uh, we learned uh, new things. And the uh, twenty minute and uh, interview, and uh, we and uh, edit. Uh, so the interview and uh, in a time frame of twenty minutes or sixty minutes. So the. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the, and the, through the and the different medium, and then and coming to visit the museum, so the museum and need to and have and a mindset and to have and a different medium and utilizing the online and that is. So the, uh, to improve and uh, develop and uh, even enhance on uh, the public program. So the, the overseas, so that it is and uh, can be utilized in the case of and uh, uh, to and uh, dispatch and uh, overseas on the in remote area. And uh, let me add something to that. And so associated with what uh, Hashimoto-san said, and uh, online is not on a one direction. So that when uh, so that we close uh, the uh, so that we can uh, enclose the space and uh, by utilizing Zoom, and on the contrary, so the social media so that when and uh, it get an uh, open and through all social media, so that we need to deal with and address and uh, uh, so the difficulty and uh, to secure safety, so the and uh, to secure and a safe place and to have a uh, deeper discussion. So, so the when, uh, so they improve the, uh, the online and we are going more online so that it could be addressed uh, in that way. Thank you. So that may be a time, it's about time. And uh, so the at noon, so the 10, uh, so the in New York, so that we have uh, and received uh, and a very different uh, and uh, and views and uh, through and uh, case studies and uh, to so the how to and uh, realize uh, international exhibitions and uh, you gave me a lot of uh, precious insights and uh, let me wrap up under uh, this session and uh, first of all I'd like to express my uh, so the sincere gratitude and uh, to presenters thank you very much for sharing your and uh, precious insight and thank you very much for joining and uh, and uh, as I'd like to uh, say an appreciation uh, for the simultaneous interpreters and uh, Ms. Ikeda and Ms. Makeda and and I think so that whether and uh, so the how but so we had acquired a uh, new communication and a media is uh, so the and a media. So the thank you very much as a remote has become an and a new uh, media. So thank you very much. So the, this is the end of the session.